Hey, arachnid bad kid. Um, it's like I say night to myself. Um, hi, uh, this is a vegan video, so beware if you're not vegan and you're not really cool with vegans, probably don't watch this. Um, and then, you know, maybe unsubscribe because, I don't know, that sounds like something that'd be annoying enough for anyone to <laughs> unsubscribe for. I've been vegan for about, uh, three years? Two, three years? Uh, for a while. Long enough to forget, anyways, but, um, I've been getting more into it because I had, uh, kind of a mental breakdown. I'm neurodivergent, and that kind of stopped me from being part of the community for a while, and, um, it was, there's a huge difference between me at the beginning of being vegan and me now, like, pre and post breakup, uh, BB and AB, if you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and I, that's one of, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make a video, and also, as I'm getting more involved in the community again, I'm noticing a lot of issues that aren't being addressed and aren't being recognized by a lot of, you know, fellow vegans. Uh, typically, and almost exclusively fellow white vegans. Um, I'm white, very obviously. Um, and so, uh, you know, like, the reason I became vegan was because of compassion, like, because loving people and wanting to do what's best for the environment and for animals and for your fellow person. And I'm not seeing that reflected truthfully in the community as much. Um, I usually just go on Tumblr, but I'm on YouTube too as well. Um, I think the biggest problem, I mean, there's several problems with veganism as the movement, but I think most of it is that, um, you know, it's very racist a lot of fellow white vegans, and I used to be, I, I didn't, I don't think I ever compared it to slavery or the Holocaust, um, but I know that I would agree when people said that, which still meant that I was enabling that, and still meant that I was a part of the problem, um, but, and I think, it's, it's still such a problem even after, you know, it, and I think it's been a problem since white people, fellow white people, myself included, joined the movement. Because, I mean, fellow white vegans, we're guests. We are guests in this movement. We didn't invent animal rights. Um, you know, and as a race, we have been way worse on every front of rights for people. You know, we've been worse about sexism and racism and homophobia and just everything, you know, and terrorism, too. Um, I mean, and, and the roots of animal welfare and animal rights are in the religion, religions and cultures of people of color. You know, Buddhism, um, I'm forgetting the other name, but I know it starts with a J. Uh, you know, and Judaism, too, that wasn't, I think it's, I don't want to mispronounce it because I don't want to <laughs> reveal just how uh, goofy I, I, I just don't want to embarrass myself really is what I'm saying um, but we really as vegan people as <laughs> white vegans we've really made it a toxic environment for the people that created this movement you know I'm Oh, we shout down people of color, we shout down vegans of color, we tell vegans of color and people of color how to feel about slavery and how to feel about animal rights, and it's not, it's not compassionate. It's not vegan to do that. And I think that's one of the most disturbing trends is, and it is especially a problem with PETA, but PETA is just, oh, PETA can, oh, PETA, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we really are not listening. We really are not adhering to the values that we preach. You know, we're not being compassionate when we compare slavery, when we compare, 
compare slavery and the Holocaust to animal agriculture. I mean, these uh, and people of color are constantly being told, and we're constantly being told, literally and um, culturally, that they were worthless than animals. I mean, and you, we still have that. We still have the repercussions. We still have the residue. We still have that, literally, too. I mean, slavery, <laughs> slavery is not over and done. We still have slavery in the U.S., and, you know, and, and as white people, it's even more egregious because we benefit from their suffering. You know, racism is very much still alive. And because it's a system of injustice, because it's institutionalized, it benefits us white people, us white vegans. We have no place. We have no background. We have no experience that makes our equation of slavery or the Holocaust to animal agriculture valid. We don't know what it's like being black. We don't know what it's like being Latina. We don't know what it's like being a Jewish person. We don't know. <laughs> and we'll never have an idea what it's like to be oppressed because of our race, because we are white. You know, and so for us to act as if we own the movement and for us to get angry at people when they say, don't do that, that offends me. That is paramount of everything we should stand against as vegans. Um, not paramount, I, mis <laughs> I misspoke. It, it's, you know, it's quintessentially everything we should stand against as, as vegans. And, I mean, I mean, I've seen, I, I, uh, I watched this video, I'll try to have a link of it in the description. But um, I think it was called Gary Yurofsky is a white racist vegan, and you probably are too. Uh, very good video. I very much suggest watching it. Um, you know, and this, you know, the, 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 uh, the YouTuber was this black person, and they said, I do value my life more than a chicken or a pig. I do believe my life is more valuable. And people were giving them shit for saying that, and that's ridiculous. You know, and it's, it, and it's so ridiculous because our culture, our society is built off of treating people of color as livestock. And it doesn't matter how well, the par how well you think it parallels animal agriculture. It doesn't matter because people are, <laughs> people are the ones we communicate best with and we are not being compassionate towards their history, towards their background. We are not being understanding, and we are not being loving. You know, as white vegans, we are not being loving when we do this. Um, other problems, I, <laughs> sorry, I mean, I, I, if you want to talk about it more, just comment in the section below. I'd love to talk about this. Um, there are people, especially people of color, that are way more articulate on this issue than me, but I felt like, you know, it's just, it's such a huge problem. As a white person, I feel obligated to point it out to other white people. Another problem I see in the um, vegan community, at least on Tumblr, is a lot of ableism and classism. I'm middle class. I'm white. Uh, I can't tell, you know, a lower class person of color or like a lower class, lower class person in general that they should go vegan. You know, I just... I can't tell them to do that logically because I'm not in their situation and also because I am privileged and it's easier for me to be vegan you know even though um you know and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna say well it actually is cheaper to be vegan and that doesn't consider you know that doesn't take into it <sighs> veganism is cheaper if you know if you have the uh if you have the food available to buy you know, it's not cheaper, it's not more accessible if you're in a food desert, if you don't have a way to cook your own food, if, um, you know, if you aren't, you know, or if you aren't paying for your own food. And I think as vegans, we should all be way more understanding of when people say, I can't be vegan right now. You know, and I'm not saying that, like, if anyone says, mmm, but bacon, mmm, 
bacon. I love my bacon. Uh, we should just be like, oh, all right, cool. Even though, you know, that's probably, you probably just don't want to associate with those people in general. You just kind of want to, uh, you just kind of want to let them be and let them figure that out themselves. But, uh, um, I, I'm not saying that, I don't know. I feel like when people say be more considerate and be more accepting of when people cannot be vegan, a lot of vegans react with, oh, you're not a real vegan. Oh, you're not really passionate. Oh, you're not really as dogmatic as you should be about this. And see, oh, what I have to say to that is that veganism is not about dogmatism. It's not about just shoving our opinions down each other's throats and down other people's throats. It's not about, like, untagged animal abuse. It's not about forcing or tricking people into looking at videos of animals being cruelly brutalized. You know, the people that actually know about it and the people that are actually aware of animal abuse, they tend to, you know, very slowly as they can move towards it. Um, move towards veganism, I mean, and those who aren't doing that already or those who are, you know, really resistant to it, they have something in their life that we don't know about that is inhibiting that. You know, they may not know about it, they may have other issues that are more prominent in their life right now, but we are in no way as vegans in the right to judge whether or not someone deserves to see animal abuse. Um, it's I, I, That's one of the huge issues I have with Gary Urofsky, because he says awful, awful, horrible things about people that use animal products, while he himself used animal products years ago. So he's not clean either, you know? I mean, I think he said something like, like, if you wear fur, you should have your skin, you should be skinned. And, you know... It's so wild to me that veganism is becoming militant and dogmatic when its roots are in some of the most peaceful and non-violent religions. You know, I mean, and it's even more ironic when you see people, and I, I'm not like a supporter of Gandhi, but like you see a lot of people talking about Gandhi and his non-violence, and then they'll do wild shit, like post-untagged animal abuse. And I, I know I'm, like, really off-kilter right now and kind of going everywhere a thousand minutes. I only got three hours of sleep last night, and I'm drinking soda, and I have not taken my ADD meds, so I am sorry. <laughs> but I will edit the shit out of this, I promise. Um, you know, I think generally to get the gist of it, we as vegans tend to take a high horse, and I know it's hard to hear that, I know it's hard because, you know, we're all about compassion. We are all about loving each other, and loving the earth, and loving animals, and loving people, and we're all about trying to do our best, and what we think is best. I just think that a lot of our actions as a community, especially fellow white vegans, aren't being truthful to what's in our hearts. And what's in our hearts is, it's beautiful. And I wish all of our actions were as beautiful as the feelings in our hearts. You know, I mean, I wish every, I wish every action, I wish every mention of veganism was as beautiful as, you know, the love you feel for your pet or the love you feel for an animal you walk by or as, you know, rich and as powerful as the sorrow and sadness that you feel for animals that you don't get to save. And, you know, and I think we can make the vegan community as beautiful as it should be, and as wholesome as its roots. Um, I think it's just going to take a lot of work and a lot of, <laughs> a lot more, you know, humility and maturity, especially from fellow white vegans and me included. Um, but yeah, on to that. I'm going to complain a little bit about, if you didn't consider all of that complaining, I'm going to complain a little bit about carnists. Now, carnists are actually, uh, my definition of them, I know it's kind of like, it varies a little bit from vegan to vegan. Most, I think most vegans, um, 
discuss it as, or <sighs> most vegans define it as uh, anyone who eats animal products, but I feel like that's unfair. To me, it's anyone who has, uh, to me, a carnist is anyone who has the ability and knowledge to go vegan, but chooses not to because of, uh, of self-pleasure. That's my definition. So, you know, like, someone who says, what, bacon? <laughs> um, oh, it's so wild when you meet one of those people. It's weird. Um, it's like meeting, it's like, are you made of straw? Is the Wizard of Oz, does he have your heart somewhere? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry uh, but yeah I just oh my gosh carnists are always trying to start shit they're always trying like in the vegan tag they're always trying to upset vegans and it's the funniest fucking thing to me because like there's like one or two vegans that respond but everyone else is like oh not this asshole again really it's like, it's like seeing a child walk right into, like, a kitchen. Like, a kitchen where you're drinking wine with all of your friends. And they just sit down and they start shitting their pants and screaming and crying. Except it's not a baby. It's like a 45-year-old man with a tumbler. <laughs> it's, um, I just, I am so done with all of the weird shitty remarks like oh all vegans are thin all vegans are white all vegans uh have sticks up their butts and it's like why are you <laughs> it, it, it's weird um it's just weird because a lot of the times they're actually describing themselves um they're like when they're talking about how much they hate vegans sorry if i'm playing with my hair so much but like when they talk about how much they hate vegans I, like, the reasons that they give for hating vegans is, like, how they come off. Like, they're like, oh, vegans are always really loudmouthed and annoying, and vegans are always really aggressive and shoving their opinions down our throats. Except, you know, I force-fed my daughter steak. I, I mean, and that's actually something that happens, is that parents, or just people in general, will trick vegans and vegetarians into eating animal products. And it's so weird! I don't know, I just... Have I like, gotten to the point in my veganism, in my veganism career, in, in my veganism where I just, like, I just laugh? <laughs> like, it used to really bother me, and I used to, like, just scour the vegan tag for arguments. I used to just go, 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 gotta fight, gotta fight, gotta fight. And I always just look at it, I'm like, I don't need to respond to this. This is silly. This is a baby throwing a tantrum. Let's just let them have their tantrum. Um, I mean, and another reason, okay, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna rant anymore about that. Um, now, uh, third topic, I should have really, like, listed off things that I was going to talk about, but I'm just going, 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 because I'm delirious from lack of sleep and too much caffeine pumping, pumping through my veins. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, with, I, okay, so I noticed, too, that there are a lot of vegans or newbie vegans, and I wanted to give some advice. Um, because it is really scary when you go vegan for the first time, especially when you don't have a support group. Um, and it's weird to say, but when you first go vegan, you actually kind of have to come out as a vegan or like a vegetarian. It's weird because as soon as you do, it's just you're made fun of nonstop. I'm not kidding. I heard like 3,000 of the same jokes within an hour. I just, ugh, it was awful. It was awful. If, just, I would say don't go vegan, but please go vegan. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so some tips for new beginners for things. Um, don't beat yourself up. Do not beat yourself up for slipping up. Do not beat yourself up if you feel like you're not doing enough. You are doing more than most people ever have. You know, for you to go vegan is amazing. And you should be really proud of yourself because that takes a lot of willpower and usually a lot of bravery if people make fun of you for it. And, you know, a lot of conviction and a lot of courage and good for you. You're doing awesome. So don't beat yourself up if you slip up every once in a while or if you didn't know something 
wasn't vegan and you ate it, don't worry. <laughs> it happens. Um, talking about food, uh, one thing that really helped me was making a list of all of the food you really liked, like all of your favorite food. For me, it was like chicken wings and burgers and french fries and potato chips and mushrooms and potatoes and potatoes, 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 because I'm not allergic to them. And I'm allergic to everything else. Um, <laughs> like the outdoors and tree bark and wheat and corn and corn is in everything. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, make a list of everything you like. And if it's not vegan, try to find a vegan substitute that you like. Um, if you're short on money, try to find one that's just as good or uh, try to find one that, you know, you, like, uh, or try to find a way that you can make it yourself if that's available to you, if you have that opportunity. Um, yeah, and, and stock up on the foods you really love. Because, you know, you're going to get cravings. You're going to be like, oh, man, I really wish I had this. And then you'll you'll have it or a vegan alternative to it right there and it's gonna help um also always carry snacks with you uh usually wherever you go you can find a vegan thing or you can like ask really politely hey could you make this vegan for me if you're like at the mall or a restaurant or starbucks or something but just in case bring a snack um my sister likes fruit i like potato chips because i am a junkie and i don't exercise <laughs> um you know, and it could be as simple as a PB&J or some pretzels or, you know, corn on the cob or a head of lettuce. I actually did that a few times. I just brought a head of lettuce with me. And uh, you get weird looks, but it's pretty tasty. I think it's worth it. Um, <laughs> you know, and I think uh, my final piece of advice for fellow vegans, newbie vegans, friends, pals... Try to learn as quickly as possible to not give a shit about people trying to antagonize you. Because you are going to get people trying to antagonize you constantly, or there are going to be people invading spaces of yours to antagonize you. Um, and a lot of vegans I've met are queer and uh, are somehow not cishet white and male and neurotypical. <laughs> and so we've kind of already learned that a little bit, but it helps when you're vegan uh, I mean, but, and that helps you when you start becoming vegan. Um, but learn when is a fight appropriate to pick and always try to come at, always try to talk to them nicely. Like, I found that people are way more receptive to you and, you know, uh, and, and usually they're going through something when they're that angry and to just, you know, try to talk with it, be patient. If you get too worked up, take a few breathers um, and just, and just try to approach it, um, as calmly and as compassionately, keyword for today, as you can. Um, yeah, I think that wraps up this video for today. Uh, expect more vegan videos, probably, I don't know, I'm kind of sporadic in how I make videos, and I'm very lazy, and also super busy. So we'll see <laughs> how this works out. Um, going to be uploading some new uh, Let's Plays, hopefully a game theory video, and an art video, if I fix my computer. I'm using my sister's computer right now. None of that you needed to know. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, you want to discuss it, you want to talk ethics, come at me, bruh. Get, I was going to say get good, and I realized there's no context for that, but yeah, feel free to message me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, friends. Bye.